Today in our 2014 BMW 3 Series, we're going to be installing our Stealth Hitch. And this is what our hitch is going to look like when it's installed. As you can see, you don't even know that it's there. It's hidden completely behind the bumper. Located on the bottom is a place to install various attachments. There is your two-inch receiver. So this is for your bike racks and cargo carriers, but is not designed for towing trailers. If you went with the towing option, instead of the two-inch receiver, you would get a ball mount. And this inserts directly into your stealth hitch. You'll also get wiring included with it, so that way you'll have all the necessary lighting for your trailer. So you'll be able to use it with your accessories, with your trailer, basically whatever you need it for. You'll want to remove the rubber plug from the bottom. The rubber plug from the side. And if it was locked, you would want to use your key and unlock it. Ours is already unlocked. You would then simply take your accessory, whichever you desire, and just push it up into place. Once it snaps in, you can press the lock in. You want to make sure that it's pressed in and locked completely. And you can put the dust cover back over your lock. This accessory here is a two inch by two inch receiver and it's designed for all of your rack mounted accessories. It uses a 5 8 inch hitch pin and clip. Now one doesn't come included with the hitch, but you can pick one up here at eTrailer.com. And now I've got some measurements for you to help you when deciding on accessories. From the ground to the top and side edge of the receiver tube, it measures about 11 inches. This is important when determining if you need to drop, rise, or raise shank on any of your accessories. And since it is so low, I would recommend a raised shank on your accessories. From the center of the hitch pin hole to the edge of the rear bumper, it measures about a half an inch. This is important when determining if any of your folding accessories can be placed in the upright storage position without contacting the bumper. To remove your accessory, first you'll unlock it, then you'll twist the knob here until it stops and your accessory will just drop right out. We'll begin our installation at the back of the vehicle with the trunk open. We need to remove both the passenger and driver's side tail light assemblies. There's a plastic cover that we're going to need to remove. There's a small pin here that we'll use our flat bladed screwdriver to unthread. And this will allow us to remove our cover. Exposing the bolts that we need to remove below. We'll then use our 10 millimeter socket to remove the hardware. We also need to remove the one bolt down here. We'll repeat the same process on the other side. We can now pull our taillight rearward to release it. I do recommend using a trim panel tool that's plastic to help pry it towards the rear as there are some tabs that need to come out of some grommets and they can be a little sticky. We'll now disconnect our wiring. Just push in on the release tab there and pull outward. We'll do that on the other side as well. Next on the inside of our wheel well, we're gonna to need to remove three bolts using an eight millimeter socket. Now we can pull our inner fender liner out and just push it back out of the way, exposing the Torx bolt that we'll need to remove right here. We're going to remove this using a T20 Torx socket. We'll repeat that same process on the other side. Next, we'll need to remove all the bolts along the bottom of our fascia. We'll use an 8mm socket for the ones around the sides. And a 10mm socket for the ones towards the center. We can now remove our fascia. You want to pull outward to release it. We're going to work it back towards our tail light area here. I'm going to go ahead and release the other side now. You'll want to check for any electrical connectors that may be present. If there are any electrical connectors present, you'll need to disconnect them. If not, you can set it aside where it won't get damaged. Now we'll unclip the plastic portion on our fascia here. To do that, you just want to pull down on the tabs and pull outward. We'll set this aside. Next, we're going to remove our entire bumper beam here on the back. 
There's bolts located on top and bottom on each side. We'll use an 18 millimeter socket to remove those. We can now pull our mm -hmm. buffer beam off. We're just gonna set it down as we're gonna be reinstalling it very shortly here. Now place your hitches cross beam over the studs where we removed our bumper beam. Reinstall your bumper beam over top of it. And then reattach it using the factory hardware. Next, take your brackets and your receiver center section, line those up with the holes in the hitch, and slide your hardware through. On the other side, we'll slide our outer bracket on again and secure it using the lock nuts that come with the kit. We can now tighten down all of our hardware using a 19 millimeter socket and wrench. We can now go back and torque our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. And then you'll want to torque your receiver as well. We can now reinstall our fascia. So we'll line that back up with how we took it off. If you had any electrical connectors on your bumper, make sure you plug those back in when you're going back together. And that completes the installation of our Stealth Hitch on our 2014 BMW 3 Series.